let's look at the next problem. We're going to have t be the number of weeks since a group of Uber drivers started and let capital C be the percent of those drivers that are still continuing to drive for Uber at time t. Okay, that's the declaration of variables right there. I'm just going to rewrite it in my own words at the top just so that I can see it easily. So t is the number of weeks. So that's unusual. We often work in years. This is the number of weeks since a group of Uber drivers started. And capital C is the percent of those drivers continuing to drive. So it's the percent that continue to drive. All right, so at the beginning, we would have 100% driving, and after a year, only 50% of that group of initial Uber drivers is still continuing to drive. So we actually have two data points now. We have the point uh, 0, 100, that is 100% of Uber drivers still drive when no time has gone by. And then we have a point at 52, because it's counted in weeks, 52, 50%. So I'll just put 52, 50. All right, we can represent this data by exponential decay, and we're going to create a model for this scenario. So again, no mention of continuous exponential decay. So let's go ahead and find the model using a discrete function. So our model would be something like capital C of t equals the initial value, which would be 100, times the b value raised to the t. Now we don't know what the b value is, but we do have another data point. We essentially have a half-life data point here, and so we can find it. So let's plug in 52, 50 to our model. So 50 equals 100 b to the 52nd power, and now we want to solve for b. Now it's always a good idea to isolate the exponential part before we do anything. So let's isolate b to the 52. We'll divide both sides by 100 to do that. So divide 50 by 100 on the left, and divide 100 b to the 52nd by 100 on the right. On the left, we'll have 0 0.5, and on the right, we have b to the 52nd power. We don't actually use a logarithm to solve this problem because it's not the exponent that's holding the variable, it's the base that's holding the variable. And this is actually a problem we do with powers. So if we want to get rid of a 50 second power, we take a 1 over 50 second power on both sides. So on both sides, I'm going to make a left parenthesis and a right parenthesis, and then the power on that is going to be 1 over 52. So I'm going to do that on the left, and I'm going to do that on the right. So a set of parentheses and the power, 1 over 52. And I'm going to drop in the equation I had. So 0 0.5 raised to the 1 52nd power on the left, and b to the 52nd raised to the 1 52nd power on the right. When I calculate 0 0.5 to the 1 over 52nd, I get a value of 0 0.9868. And that's equal to b, because 52 times 1 over 52 just makes 1. So now I have the b value. I can rewrite this model. It's c of t equals 100 times 0 0.9868, and I'll put that part in parentheses, to the t power. So there's a model for this scenario, and you could go ahead and graph that model to make sure it looks OK to you. Make sure that at one year, you have about 50% of the drivers left. All right, our final problem. And this would be a great place for you to go ahead and try the problem yourself. If you haven't done that for the others, why don't you pause the video and try it for this one. All right, let's see how you did. In 2018, of the 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic that's been produced in the world, 6.3 billion metric tons has become plastic waste. If present trends continue, then by 2050, there will be 12 billion metric tons of plastic waste in landfills. Assuming continuous exponential growth, we want to find the rate of increase in landfill plastic each year. Okay, so there is an initial value here. It's in 2018, and it's the 6.3 billion metric tons has become plastic waste. We have another data point, which is that in 2050, there will be 12 billion metric tons of plastic waste in landfills. So we have essentially two data points, and we need to find a model so that we know what the growth rate is. Let's go ahead and start by declaring variable. So I'm going to let t be the number of years since 2018. And I'll use a capital P to represent the plastic waste in landfills, and that is in billion metric tons. 
Okay, and we have a continuous exponential growth. So let's write down what we've got so far. We would have a model that is capital P of T equals the initial value, which is 6.3, not 8.3. That's kind of a red herring in there. It's just a number that is there for informational purposes. So 6.3 then times e to the, and in the power we would have k times t. Now we don't know k, but we do have another point. We know that the point represented by 2050 would be a second point. Now 2050 is 32 years after 2018. So the point we're gonna use is gonna be 32 comma 12 billion metric tons. And the reason again that it's 32 is that it is 32 years after 2018. Okay, let's put in this data point and solve for K. That'll give us 12 equals 6.3 e to the K times 32 years. All right, we want to isolate the exponential part e to the k times 32. I'm going to start by dividing both sides by 6.3. That's 12 divided by 6.3 on the left, and 6.3 e to the k times 32 divided by 6.3 on the right. 6.3 is on the right, reduced to make 1. 12 divided by 63 is 1.0. 9048, and that's equal to e to the 32k. I'm just going to write it in a slightly less awkward way. Now I have the exponential part isolated, and so I can take a natural log on both sides. I'll take the natural log of the left side, so that's natural log left parentheses right parentheses, leaving myself some space, and natural log left parentheses right parentheses on the right hand side, leaving some space. Now I drop in the equation from the previous line. So we'll have natural log of 1.9048 equals the natural log of e to the 32k. So the natural log of 1.9048 is equal to 32k because the natural log and the e are inverses and they drop out. Our final step here is to simply divide both sides by 32 to get the k by itself. So we'll have natural log of 1.9048 divided by 32 equals 32k divided by 32. And the 32s will reduce on the right hand side making 1. And this will give us a k value of ln 1.9048 divided by 32. And we can certainly evaluate that to get a k value of 0 0.0201, which is a continuous growth rate of 2%. And if you wanted to finish this off by writing the model, it would be capital P of t equals 6.3 e to the 0 0.02 t. I'm just going to round that to 0 0.02 since the 0 0.0001 doesn't make much of a difference. Just to recap, it's important in these problems to write down what your variables are going to represent. We almost always re-index the time so that our initial value is at zero. Pay attention to years, weeks, months, what is the scenario counting in, and then pay attention to whether you have continuous growth or discrete growth. And we generally assume discrete growth if we're not told continuous growth.